Hello, dear students. This is your engineering mathematics three lecture. Today's topic is integral equation. This topic is from second unit Fourier, second unit. I mean, second unit the topic Fourier transform, integral equation. An example: Solve the integral equation. Integration was zero to infinity f of x sine lambda x dx is equal to e raised to minus lambda. Where lambda is greater than zero. Now the solution for this equation, integral equation. Now here the given integral is integration over zero to infinity f of x sine lambda x dx is equal to e raised to minus lambda. Lambda is greater than zero. Now this integration in this integration dx is the differential here. Dx is the differential means x is variable and so lambda is constant term. Respect to integration. With respect to integration. Okay. Now, this is a definite integration. So, if we replace this x by u, we have the integration. Integration over zero to infinity f of u sine lambda u du, and this term is nothing but the integration of Fourier transform, Fourier sine transform. This is the LHS side is nothing but Fourier sine transform. This is the formula of Fourier sine transform, and this is it is nothing but e raised to minus lambda. So we have given the value of sine Fourier sine transform. We have given the value of Fourier sine transform. This is clear for this integration. Okay. Now, as sine lambda x is present in the integrand, we use Fourier sine transform, and so the value of Fourier sine transform is equal to e raised to minus lambda. Is it clear? Now to find f of x means inverse Fourier cos sorry inverse Fourier sine transform. We use inverse Fourier sine transform formula. F of x is equal to the formula. F of x is equal to two upon pi into integration or zero to infinity f s lambda f sub sub x s, s for sine transform. F s lambda into sine lambda x d lambda. It is equal to two upon pi integration or zero to infinity f suffix s lambda sine transform. Now its value is given in the example. It is e raised to minus lambda. So you replace f s lambda by e raised to minus lambda into sine lambda x d lambda. Now two upon pi as it is. Now how to solve this integration? Integration or zero to infinity e raised to minus lambda into sine lambda x d lambda. Here there is a product of two functions, by, but we cannot use here u into v rule, that is integration by parts, because one of the function is here exponential function, and we can differentiate it n times. The derivative is not vanishing. Similarly, the second function is sine function, and we can differentiate this function also n times. Its derivative is not vanishing. We can differentiate it n times. So derivative is not not vanishing for either function. So we cannot use here u into v rule to solve this integration. And there is one standard formula to solve this integration. And that formula is here. It's mentioned here. See, formula is first is integration e raised to x into sine bx dx it is equal to e raised to x into e raised to x upon a square plus b square. Where a is coefficient of exponential function and b is coefficient of sine function. So e raised to x upon a square plus b square in bracket a sine b x minus b cos b x. And second formula integration e raised to x into cos b x d x. It is equal to e raised to x upon a square plus b square into a cos b x plus b sine b x. So we are going to use this formula here. That integration for so Integration of zero to infinity e raised to minus lambda into sine lambda x d lambda. Here, the coefficient of exponential function is minus one because, with respect to this integration, lambda is variable and the coefficient of lambda in exponential function is minus one, and in sine function, the coefficient of uh, sine function is x because lambda is variable and with lambda the constant term is x, so the value of the constant coefficient is x. So use the formula that e raised to x. This first formula e raised to x 
into sin bx is here. The value of a is here minus one, and the value of b is x. So using this first formula, that a is minus one and b is x. Two upon pi as it is inside the bracket. E raised to minus lambda upon a square plus b square. A is here minus one, so square of minus one minus one square plus b is here x, so square of x is x square. Right in bracket. A sine b x a is here minus one, so minus one into sine lambda x minus sine for second term because of formula into b cos b x b is here x b cos lambda x bracket complete and the limit zero to infinity. Okay, now the upper limit is infinity, so put lambda is equal to infinity because lambda is variable here in this integration. So replace lambda by upper limit infinity. Two upon pi as it is. E raised to minus infinity. E raised to minus infinity is zero. The so after putting upper limit, infinity. E raised to minus infinity is zero. So the first term is zero. Now negative sign. Give negative sign for lower limit. Lower limit is here zero. So give negative sign here. Then put lambda is equal to zero. E raised to zero. E raised to zero means one. So right here one upon minus one square is one. Plus x square, so the term is one upon one plus x square. Now inside the bracket, we are putting lambda is equal to zero, sine zero is zero, so this first term is zero, and minus minus x into cos zero, cos zero is one, so minus x in bracket. So this minus and this minus sign get plus, and so the term is f of x is equal to two upon pi into x upon one plus x square. And so this is your answer. This is the solution of the integral equation. Okay. Now the next example. Solve the integral equation. Integration of zero to infinity. The f x cos lambda x b x is equal to in. It is defined in two intervals. First one minus lambda when lambda lies between zero to one, and the second interval is zero when lambda is greater than one. So one is the point of discontinuity here. As Cos lambda x is present in the integrand. See what is the RHS? Sorry, sorry. What is the LHS term of the uh, equation? Integral equation. Integration of zero to infinity f of x cos lambda x dx. If we replace this is definite integral, so we can uh, change the variable here. So if we replace that x by u, the formula will be f of u. Sorry, the LHS side will be f of u integration of zero to infinity f of u cos lambda u du. And this is nothing but the formula of Fourier cosine transform, and its value is given into the following two intervals from zero to one and one to infinity. So you write here as cos lambda x is present in the integrand, we use Fourier cosine transform, and it is f c lambda is equal to integration or zero to infinity f of x cos lambda x dx is equal to it is defined into intervals one minus lambda when lambda is in between zero to one. And make it zero when lambda is greater than one. Now to find f of x, consider inverse Fourier cosine transform. We are going to solve this integral equation, so we are going to find the inverse Fourier cosine transform. And the formula for inverse Fourier cosine transform is f of x is equal to two upon pi into integration of zero to infinity f c lambda into cos lambda x d lambda. Now here put the value of f c lambda. f c lambda means Fourier cosine transform, and it is. Uh, Defined in two intervals from zero to one and one to infinity. So two upon pi as it is integration over zero to one. The function is one minus lambda. So put f c lambda is equal to one minus lambda into cos lambda x d lambda plus from one to infinity the function uh, Fourier cosine transform is zero. So second integration is zero. Now solve this um, integration two upon pi as it is the first integration. Integration of zero to one, one minus lambda into cos lambda x d lambda. Now there is a product of two functions. One of them is linear term one minus lambda, and second one is cos function cos lambda x. Integration is with respect to lambda. Lambda is variable, so use here u into v rule because derivative of one minus lambda vanishes earlier as compared to derivative of cos function. So use here the general formula of u into v. So u is here one minus lambda because its derivative vanishes earlier. So one minus lambda is your u. U into v one. V one means integration of cos function. Integration of cos lambda x is 
sin lambda x upon x because constant term is here x lambda is variable so integration of first function is sin lambda x upon x minus u negative sin to second term by the formula into sorry minus sin then derivative of 1 minus lambda with respect to lambda derivative of 1 is 0 and minus lambda is minus 1 so write in bracket minus 1 in another bracket v2 v2 means integration of v1 v1 is there sin lambda x upon x x is constant so as it is v1 1 by x is as it is sin lambda x integration is minus cos lambda x upon x already x is there so x into x x square so this is the integration of v1 u into v1 minus u dash v2 next term u double dash means derivative of this minus 1 derivative of minus 1 is 0 so no need to write it so the all, all the next terms are zeros so no need to write stop here and the limits 0 to 1 now the variable is here lambda so you put lambda is equal to 1 upper limit so 2 upon pi as it is now lambda is equal to 1 means 1 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 0 means 0 into this term is 0 first term 0 minus minus plus again the minus sign is there so give minus sign here cos x because lambda is 1 cos x upon x square okay cos x upon x square now put lower limit 0 lower limit 0 means lambda is equal to 0 for lower limit you give negative sign to every term minus sign sin 0 because we are putting lambda is equal to 0 sin 0 0 so this term is 0 minus minus plus minus sign and the minus sign of lower limit minus minus plus and the lower limit is 0 to put lambda is equal to 0 cos 0 is 1 1 upon x square and here f of x is equal to 2 upon pi as it is now denominator is same here x square so we can do the addition of numerator so 1 minus cos x upon x square so the function is f of x is equal to 2 upon pi in the bracket 1 minus cos x cos x upon x square so this is the solution for the integral equation so uh, you solve the integral equation means there the Fourier transform is given either uh, cosine transform or sine transform whatever it, you can identify it easily from the given equation and you have to just find the inverse Fourier transform inverse Fourier cosine transform or sine transform here four examples are there for practice we try to solve these examples solve the integral equations and so here the first topic Fourier transform is over thank you thank you